Hey everyone, how are you doing? Today I'm going to talk to you about how you can install Temporal Kit and run it with Automated 11 Alert, right? So let me just show you how to install Temporal Kit and let me just before that let me just show you what kind of uh, outputs you get. So this is something uh, I created with a bit of low CFG scale and wanted to just test it out and see how smooth it would run. So you could just uh, check it out. You can see that it's pretty smooth. Uh, it looks uh, like a, uh, you have added a filter. And now I wanted to try something else with a bit more higher, high CFG scale. So this is something I did. You can see that even though it's moving, it's pretty constant with the animation. So it looks pretty fun. There is the bit of uh, shaking. Uh, I have to look into that as well. And uh, so this is one of the other results I've tried. Uh, but uh, it, uh, you also tend to get outputs a bit blurry. So there is also that as well. So let me just show you before getting into all these details how to install this. It's fairly simple. You have to uh, go to the one minute, sorry. Okay. Uh, you have to go to the temporal kit GitHub. Just copy the link from here. Go to uh, automatic 11.11, go to extensions, go to install from URL and paste it here. And once you have installed it, uh, you just have to uh, go and put here, check for updates and apply and restart UI. Then you'll get a new tab called temporal kit. So it's fairly simple to use. Okay. So let me just show you how to use this. First, you have to create a new folder called, uh, you can create any folder you want. Okay. And you can just uh, choose what kind of video you want to run with. I would suggest uh, choosing something small at the start and then proceeding further from that. Okay. Uh, let's try, let's see, I have a bunch of videos. Uh, we could go with uh, something with a clear face. So probably this. So this is pretty clear. This is okay. Uh, let's just check its uh, FPS value as well. So to check the FPS value, you have to go to properties, details, and here you can see the frame rate. It's 30 FPS. So once you have all the details, you just uh, drag and drop it here. Uh, okay. And now you, uh, actually you divide the images into four frames or if you want three sides, you get at least uh, nine images. So let's go with four frames. Okay. Uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this is 30 FPS. We want five, uh, uh, five frames per keyframe so what does it mean means you have to take every five frames from the yeah, keyframe so it's like from the video so it's like 0 5 10 15 so so on and so forth you have to just do the uh, target path where you want to uh, put all of this so i have created a new folder called temporal git so i'm just going to give it path okay of the batch settings we want it to run in batch okay and so uh, you ha if you have any video about 10 seconds, even above 8 seconds, uh, I would suggest you use the split video function because EB Synth cannot uh, comp uh, process 20 frames directly, 20 keys directly, more than 20 keys directly. So I'll, I'll make you, uh, I'll show you an example of what that means. Okay. First, let's just run this and I'll show you what, what are the results we get. Okay. So we are going five uh five every five frames okay two sides and 30 fps so once you're done with it you can see it's uh it's processing here okay so we got uh, around six folders okay and in here in the input we are getting every fifth frame so right you can see th that we are getting every fifth frame and if you don't want to deal with that many frames you could go uh, a bit low and say that uh, I want to deal with every sixth frame. Okay. So let's go with six and actually delete, with, delete the rest of the images you got. Okay. So I would go with simply deleting all of these. Okay. And rerunning it. So, and also as you have sh uh, shown before, once you get the f uh, frame with four images, they only have a resolution of 1024. But if you want to improve the quality of the image, the final output you get, 
you try to increase the uh, height resolution. That way you get uh, actually better images. Okay. So we are just going to save these settings and now run it again. So we are now taking a, the sixth frame from the video, every sixth frame from the video. Okay. So we are getting, now you can see in the inputs. Okay. It's just processing, give it a moment. So it's processing. Uh, let me just pause the video for a while till it processes. So now we are uh, getting the inputs, okay? So here is an input. So we are like every sixth frame of the video. Okay, once we got all of these, now let's go to image to image tab. Okay, take a single frame. Uh, adjust the width and height. So height would be around 912, 904, okay, 512, 904. So I'm going to use Dream Shaper. You can use any, any model you want. So let's go with Dream Shaper. Uh, I'm going to just copy the negative props from here and uh, try it with my own prop. So I'm just going to copy the negative prompts. Okay. Now I want to create an image which is, uh, let's say, a bit more uh, anime style. So let's go anime style 8K. I want to also have a cyberpunk theme. So cyberpunk style in same details. Let's say I want to give her purple hair. Masterpiece. So yeah, that's about it. This looks fi fine for me. And I'll, let's also add until in jet. Okay. Okay. And now, uh, without using C, uh, the control net, just let's now generate a single image for now. Okay. Sorry about that. So this generating a single image. Okay. So, I mean, look, yeah, it looks okay. Just now, uh, uh, have this seed value and now go to the control net. Uh, I would prefer you choose uh, the depth model, reduce the weight a bit. Let's go with 0 0.8. And another model would be the HED model, which uh, I'll be linking the in the description below on where to download all of these models. Okay. So let's go with the uh, HED. Okay. And also reduce the weight a bit. Okay. And once you're done with it, now just uh, generate the image and see how it looks right. Okay, did I enable them? Yes, uh, the control net, the depth model. Okay, I did not think I, yeah, that's why it's not coming. So, okay, let's reduce the CFG scale to 10, uh, denizing strength to around 0 0.6. Let's see how it, uh, what kind of results we get. Just give it a moment. So, here are the results we are getting. You can see that. Uh, no, it is more stylized, a bit more anime style. You can obviously mess around with the settings. Uh, try to see if it works better with the higher deionizing strength. And uh, let's go with the lower CFG scale. Uh, even a different uh, uh, sampling method as well. So let's go with well, what are they using. Let's go with DVMHD Gyrus. Okay, so we can try that as well. Okay, and see if it if that works better. So yeah. Uh, I like this. It looks a bit different also, but also consistent. Now try the uh, the same prompt with a different image as well and see how it performs. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I like this. Uh, I like how the outputs are. Okay. So now uh, it's fairly simple. You just have to go to batch, put in your input directory. So uh, in temporal kit, we have the input folder where you have all the images. So put in the input directory. And similarly, now go to temporal kit, go to the output directory and just copy that in the output path. And once you're done with it, uh, just press generate. So once you're done with uh, uh, generating all the images, so I have generated all the outputs, you can see them here. So they look pretty good. So once you're done with generating all the outputs, it's fairly simple on how to stitch them back. So we have to go to temporal kit or go to in in process. Okay. Put in the folder uh, 
path, the whole folder path, and, uh, and just press read last settings. Okay. So once you press that, uh, let's say we want the output resolution to be 204, right, rather than 1024. I don't know why we got 1024. That's surprising. Okay. And then you just uh, press on prepare EBC. So once you press that, yeah, I can actually see that all the fray, uh, the images have been divided into frames. So you can see in the frames, we are getting all the new images from the video. And also you get a new uh, folder called keys and which you get all the uh, output images divided into individual frames. Okay. So I'll uh, just give me a moment uh, till it process. Okay. So as you can uh, see here, we are getting all the output frames as individual keys, right? And now you can see the size of it, which is around uh, 204, right? So if the higher the size, you you, uh, you usually get better images. But I also would suggest you to, once you get the output, to uh, use it with uh, some level a scale of upscaler using real ESR GAN or something like that. Okay. So it is still processing as uh, there are a lot of folders. Okay. Uh, I think it's almost done. Let me just check for the new folders as well. Okay. It's not done. It's going to take a while. So let me just pause the video for that. So I think we are done with the recent process. So you get a bunch of uh, folders with key frames and frames so you get frames you get keys okay and now you just have to open ebsynth okay let's go ebsynth.exe okay and fail simply do this so let's go zero uh put in your frames under video put in your keys under key frames and once you're done you just say run run it all Similarly, you have to do that for the rest of the folders. And once you're done with it, you just have to press uh, recombine ebsyn so that you get uh, all the images recombined and you get a video. So let me do it quickly and show it to you. So it's going to take a while. So I'm done with the first floor folder. Similarly, you have to do with the second, uh, the third and so on. So it's kind of annoying if you're doing dealing with the long videos, but this is better than uh, not doing it at all. Okay, so you just have to open EBC once more. Go to folder number one, put in the frames to video, is to key, and run it all. So similarly, you have to do it for the rest of them. And let me uh, show you the final output once I'm done with all of this. So I have processed uh, all the images from all the folders. And now just you have to press recombine with EVSynth. So once you are done with it, we'll start recombining all of these images and creating a video with that. So yeah, it has created the final video. Uh, here it is. It is without audio though, but you can see it's pretty, actually pretty consistent, I know. Uh, you can actually try, if no, to have the same animation if you uh, put down the CFG scale. But I wanted to try something different and it looks actually pretty cool for me. So I'll uh, add, the, uh, add the audio and probably also upscale it to 4K and then try it out uh, and upload it. So yeah, that's about it guys. I uh, hope you had, uh, you know, you learned something new, had some... I uh, it, it had clarified all of your doubts and let me know if you have any more queries do subscribe to my channel uh that's about it have fun now now keep diffusing as well